All right, everyone. Good morning. Here we are, Sunday, August 20th, and I'm on board. I've been on board for five minutes with Beloved Grace, and we've already started the Zoom call basically by talking and deep diving, deep diving into the topics which emerge us all from the narratives of mental illness. Uh, this is my five-minute introduction. This is our five-minute introduction for the Ministry of Psychiatric Sobriety and for our Sunday Morning Zoom call every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. We got another on board. Let me do gallery view. Hi, Marcy. So anyway, who are we? What do we do? Who am I? Why do I do this? Um, well, I was inside of a very dark place for a very long time. I emerged out of that place with grace, hard work, and, and lots of faith. And by a dark place, I was a trauma survivor as a youth and went the psychiatric route where I got lots of pills, which helped at first. When I got to be a middle-aged man, the pills that were helping me were harming me. So I had to make a difficult decision, you know, get off of all the pills and go in a completely different direction. Did anything go wrong? Absolutely not. I get to host this ministry. I get to meet all of you. And I, I get to have a testimony which is more valuable than credentials and green paper strips and little round metal discs. A testimony is, is um, what I consider to be fertilizer, fertilizer for what I have called an emergence. I don't post these Zoom calls because I think people can heal from mental illness. I host these Zoom calls because I emerged, you know, not as a, I say it every single time, not as a healed caterpillar, as a butterfly. That mental illness Put me into a cocoon and you have to have a cocoon to emerge as a butterfly. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. You know, that's the new narrative. That's that's what spirit that I was downloaded. This narrative spirit said, this is the narrative. The ego said something had gone wrong. You know, spirit said, absolutely not. So I can get really winded. This is my my introduction because I use psych meds because I mean, because I use psych meds because I don't anymore. And I'm talking about benzodiazepines, too, and, and not just psych meds, you know, alcohol and drugs and sex and other addictions. OK, I want to include a, a disclaimer at the beginning of every Zoom call because these are being recorded for YouTube. And I don't want anyone to watch these and to do something harmful and reckless to themselves, like decide to get off all their psych meds because it doesn't work that way. The way it works is like is like this. We we we. We gather together in community, we do the work in community, and when that voice in our head tells us it's it's time to surrender medications, then we listen to that voice, but the voice has got to come internally and not externally, so I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm only sharing what I did, and a lot of us have done it too, and we're grateful for it. So again, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're considering this to surrender your, your, your pharmaceuticals, you've got to go to your doctor and you've got to get outside resources because we don't discuss that here. So because it's a ministry, it's got to be a ministry. I say this every single time. Uh, is it a Christian ministry? It, it in, in 2023, we, we, we I, I hope by now we've graduated from the kindergarten of religions. Um, we do need a path, and it does have to be a spiritual path. Uh, most of us here have chosen Course in Miracles. I chose Course in Miracles because I didn't heal my mental illness. I unbelieved in the dream character who was harnessing the mental illness in the first place. That's a very complicated statement, but we go into it. So anyway, because it's a ministry... I start all of these Zoom calls off with the healer's prayer because it's spirit that really does the healing on our behalf or only messengers. And the, the prayer goes like this. We are here only to be truly helpful and we are here to represent him or her who sent us. We do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he or she who sent us will direct us. We are content to be wherever he or she wishes knowing that he or she goes there with us and we will emerge as we let him or her teach us how to emerge others. I changed the last word from healing to emergence. All right, beloved, you're on. You want to unmute yourself. Marcy was, Marcy came on, Marcy came off. She's probably having connection problems. Where, where were we going before all this? That was a wonderful introduction, Kenneth. That was a very wonderful uh, way to say what we're about here and, and, you know, your credentials, 
if you will. And, you know, our credentials probably isn't what everybody want to flash unless you're ready to come on out the closet and admit your life isn't working. I've, I've gone to a lot of people in my history who had credentials because I was a believer in, in all that. You know, I, I came out of a, a conservative system and psychologically they 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 had a, a lot of quality material um the component of love has got to be priority and and i my, my first sponsor suzanne oh, what was her name suzanne stanford she's been gone for about three years now I, I i miss her but you know when when she got a hold of me probably 14 years ago she was she was an old woman then i would not know she's in the late 70s but she cornered me and she pointed her finger out and she said, she was an oracle. She said, you are going to start sponsoring others. And let me tell you this, young man. She said, if you cannot love who you're going to sponsor, you have absolutely no business working with that person whatsoever. <laughs> Wasn't that a wonderful gift I was given? True. Wow. Oracle. If you cannot love, do, we, I, do you think we sponsor here? Or are you talking, you personally still sponsor she people? Want to be, she did not want to be my AA sponsor, but she knew I was asking for help. And she knew that that it was hers. To, it, she, she felt guided to answer the call. She, she, I mean, she you might want to explain that's how AA works. You all get a sponsor, right? Is AA, that how AA works? Sponsor, I mentor, loving friend, guide, uh uh, mighty companion. I she used the word sponsor because I was under the the, the umbrella of the twelve step parameters, and that's where we met. Uh, but her message to me that it, it it crosses all all barriers of relationships. And and the other thing she said to me was absolutely. I mean, remember she was wagging her finger at me like this in the car. She said no hierarchy whatsoever. Now that woman was not. Let me let me say this much about Suzanne Stanford. She was not too well assembled. And, and it took me a long time to figure that out. But spirit spoke through her. And I think that's where all of us come from. We don't have to be well assembled. Don't wait till you're ready, is what, in other words. We, there's no say, perfect ego. There's no perfect ego. And that healer's prayer works, by the way. Because I, I come on this Zoom call a lot of times when I don't, I don't feel like hosting these Zoom calls sometimes. And by the end of the recording, whatever comes out looks like, it makes it look like I am some well assembled, you know, uh, lecture because not because I it, it's because I have the faith to step aside in, in trust I I can't put that forward enough trust and you you've, you've heard my hairband story and I think by now hokey you know people can disbelieve it but I just found another one yesterday I was I was walking I I I, I I wasn't feeling, you know, like doing a job. You know, I wasn't feeling like unloading my tools. And I said, you know what? Just get in the car and go to Home Depot. And as soon as I got out of the car, I looked in the parking lot and there was another one, one of hundreds. And when I got to Home Depot, there was a man at the paint counter who I started to laugh with. And then when I got to the checkout counter, there was a woman I was supposed to meet. I couldn't get the, the gift card to register. So I called for help. She came over. And, and I don't know what, what, what prompted the conversation, but next thing you know, I'm holding up this, this little, you know, uh, round, you know, round scrunchie. Mm -hmm. And I started to tell her the story and it was exactly the story she needed. And I wasn't supposed to go there to pick up paint. I was supposed to go there to meet the man at the paint counter and meet the woman at the checkout counter. That's what David Hoffmeister says. He says, this, this world, you know, as we're going, and, and all the other, you know, Kenneth Wapnick, this is just the backdrop. This is just a backdrop for us to, to, to get to join and to meet others. We, we've got to, you know, my, my old pattern, my mental illness was, was go to Home Depot, check off everything on the list and get out of there as quickly as possible so I can get to the job site, so I can finish the job. Or goal setting. Mental illness is goal setting. I mean, I've got, you know, the, the bigger picture is, you know, who am I and, and why am I here? You know, after that near-death experience, I realized that that all these jobs that I do are just they're, they're just securitous. It's all it's all gonna you know that that job that I did in in, in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's just gonna it's just moth and rust. The whole thing's gonna fall apart. What was the what was underneath it? 
what was the, 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 the and I couldn't see it at the time. A lot of times I still can't see it. But you know, when I get, when I get another hairband on the asphalt, I have to stop in my tracks because there's no there is no logical explanation for how I have hundreds of those. There's something well, that I can't... let me talk about. We don't do logical here, honey. That's the um, that's that caterpillar talk. Mm-hmm. So we're we're in quantum physics. This is the, we're in, right. We're in metaphysics here. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you know, of course, miracles can't come over how you can explain that logically there's you know that's you know that you well that is a metaphysical happening and i think that's what we're here to witness to we're we're not going to say anything like kenneth says about what you do on the caterpillar level like logically you got to see your doctor and he's got to taper you i don't know all this stuff but i'm learning all these words from being in this group um and blah, blah, blah. And yet, what you're seeing in front of you, Kenneth, is a miracle. Even logically, he can't, he can't explain how he came out. He can say, well, this and that. And, but ultimately, all of us have to say the miracle. We, 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 we connected to sanity. We connected to the truth. We finally got light in the darkness. We got a clue. For me, it's a course in miracles. And whatever it is, commit yourself to it. When you bounce around from one theology or philosophy to another, that's just kind of going to make you just crazy. Or, you know. You know I, I often, a lot of times I, I realize, you know, I'm on a life support system. You know, it's, an ox, it's, it's like I carry around an, an invisible oxygen tank and I have to take a gulp of spiritual of spiritual air i realized you know and you're, you're right beloved you know ken in 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 another realm i i was gone kenny was gone a long time ago in in, a, in, a, in another dimension kenny disappeared a very long time ago in this dimension the body was in perfectly good order so the body stayed in this dimension so when i when i speak of caterpillar and butterfly truly it it there 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 was and there is still this metamorphosis taking place. I, I, and, and I, I truly believe that those hair bands, and it's not just that, I, I see synchronistic hits all over the place. It's spirit saying, you know, this, what's, what's, what's I'm trying to look for? It's a reminder that, um, it's, it's, it's to remind me that, that I'm, I'm now living in, in a completely new paradigm that, that really cannot, cannot go back to to any of my old I, I still get memories of how to you know how to use these tools how to remodel and, and you know how to, to to do some of those those you know trades that I was trained for um other than that it's it's a completely new model of of living and I'm not reinventing the wheel Bill W you know said you know you know in order to recover from addictions it it has to be a completely new model he used the word recover from hopelessness. I think hopelessness is not what we think. You know, in, in, in the old model, it's it's bad, something to fix. In in this model, I was I was I took an outreach call um, you know, it was a couple of days ago, and the woman was in, in, in terrible, you know, well, like when, when you when you get to be, you know, in in a in a withdrawal, you know, it the, the narratives just start spinning really fast. And a lot of these these groups which are designed to to be helpful, you know, actually can trigger more than than their healing. But what came out of me was the same narrative I've been sharing on all these Zoom calls. Caterpillar, cocoon, butterfly. And 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 it's because I was there, I said, I said, ma'am, you are simply in a cocoon and I, I am not seeing any damage. I'm not seeing anything going wrong. And actually I'm seeing an opportunity. Would you like to join us in this opportunity? And, it, you know, I saw someone go from depression and anxiety to start to smile. So that's the fertilizer. That's the gift that came out of all this. Someone who was probably, you know, maybe that's somebody. That's sanity. It's, it's really sanity because let's just we're all insane if you think you're this vulnerable body having to do all these things and all all the stuff we were raised to believe we were so even if you you haven't been diagnosed you're you're in the crazy town so we so the sane voice is what's leading us here 
the same voice and the same voice means it's all love it's all in alignment it's all in alignment with a loving caring guiding safe universe you know nothing can go wrong can it often says nothing went wrong all we just needed was a big enough wake up call and for some of us it came in that we might have gotten diagnosed as mentally ill that was my wake up call so um this is about us coming together saying wake up it's only love and what Kenneth you were saying about sometimes you don't feel like coming here and I was telling you the same thing sometimes I don't feel like coming I don't feel like showing up for myself and then I say but will I show up for somebody else and if I can I can I will you know so I just want to say that's the importance of us coming together because I'm going to care for whoever hears this and, and my cohorts here. Um, if I can't care enough about myself to get out of the hole I was going in, right? Because all we're talking about, we keep, we keep getting sucked back into that black hole. This is, this is it. It's sanity, insanity, sanity, insanity. You can't be both at the same time. So we're, we're in the middle. We can choose. You know, when you see yourself crazy, do you want to stay there? You got to really, you got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps if you don't have no faith. If you have faith, then use it. Use your faith. And I love, Kenneth, I think that's how those headbands work. They're your faith. I get 444, 222, 55. I, I, I think, oh, spirit's hugging me right now. Thank you. There we go. Spirit's hugging us. Well, I want to get back to you, beloved, but um, Marcy, good morning. How are you? There's your smile. Good morning. Marcy, so many thanks for coming on and all, all of your comments on, the, on the, the video. So many thanks. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. I'm not awake yet, so nice to see you, beloved. Good. Yeah. Nice to be back. I missed you last week, so... Yeah, I didn't get to finish um, watching it, but I know y'all held it down. We did. Uh, yeah, because, you know, it's 12 noon where I am at. Mm. So sometimes mm -hmm. I have other obligations, but. Well, yeah. But I was just saying, I'm so glad you can't, you know, that we're all here to support. Mm -hmm. And like Kenneth said, it's pretty much egalitarian, right? We all in here, this, this pot of soup together, and we just bring mm -hmm. our own unique flavor and uh, blessings to this pot. You know, I, um, I had kind of a realization this week and, um, it sounds like a little bit of what you guys were talking about. Um, I realized when I'm on my knees, like literally on my knees, my ears open up. It's like <laughs> I, can I love it. I love it. That's great. Oh my God. It's like, it's almost like a physiological thing. And I, it's like. I hear things that I otherwise wouldn't hear. I, I connect with people that I otherwise wouldn't connect with. I come on this group and the only reason I'm on this group is because I'm on my knees. So it took me being on my knees to come to this group. And I for the YouTube be audience, beloved and I are both doing this. We're agreeing with you. Thank you. So humbled. <laughs> It's Matter of fact, that's that's the topic for the Zoom call. Thank you. My yeah. ears open up when I'm on my knees. You got it. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, they like almost literally like pop up. Like I I can hear things. Like there's some things that you know I'll be scrolling on my phone and a YouTube video will pop up and it's on Soma Breath, right? Teaching you, and I'm like, oh, thanks, thanks for the hit. You know, thank you, Holy Spirit, for you know giving me my next tool. So I'm grateful. My ears are open. My knees are sore and my ears are open. <laughs> we, we have to get seasoned. We have, we, we, I'm 50, we're, we're all, you know, at the, in the way into the second half of life when, when we, we've got the, the, the data of, of what, you know, of our, 
of the transitory nature of this of this not only life but this world itself and and that's when life begins to to to, to happen for us because we finally just say we can't do it anymore and you know usually when my spirit guide said oh, i've been waiting for you to finally make that admission so i could start driving this car for you next thing you know hair spirit guide is grover right <laughs> Oh, I just talked like my actually my spirit is Mark. I love that. I love it. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know how it's 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 really hard to put this into language because you know I think that's a lot of a lot of times you know I want to give spiritual teachers credit because they're enlightened, but actually I think it has more to do with their capacity to put it into human language probably than the enlightenment itself. Because trying to to put this into you know into words. And, and, and symbols for people to understand is 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 part of the challenge trying to explain the there are no words when I had my death near death experience I came back saying I I tried it I tried it first to, to tell people oh my god you should see you should everyone kind of kind of looked at me oh yeah that's nice can you can you can you hand me a diet coke I'm like they they <laughs> But I, but I, I love to... what happens. I mean, the, the I don't hear until I'm on my knees. I mean, say that again. I mean, that is beautiful. Did you write that down? When I'm on my I knees, open. my ears, my ears open. open. Yeah. They pop oh, open. Oh, man, that is so <laughs> true and succinct. And, so and it's not, a, and you said your knees are sore. And I have to laugh because I was uh, a member of a, of a religion that, goes on their knees five times a day and so and in each <laughs> prayer you're going up and down mm -hmm. and um you know I mean I hear what you're saying it's the suffering mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that way we're not saying it does right mm -hmm. I'm not saying that suffering will will is the only way to get my attention back that I'm crazy but it sure works mm -hmm. yes it is. It gets my attention. It it get, it it works right now, and it alerts me when I am wanting, again, the things of this world to soothe my needs, mm -hmm. and and that is our. We always get sucked back into that because mm -hmm. we're on this spiritual path, and then we just go and just look for validation in this caterpillar world, which is never going to happen. Why would we think so? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it does connect us because they're on the emergence journey with us too. And that's who we're here for. We're here for those who have already crashed and burned and ready to, you know, Course in Miracles, you know, or whatever truth you're going to practice that you are worthy all the time right now, whether you're on this or you look like this or you've been diagnosed with this or you got whatever you don't got. We're here to say all that was caterpillar definition, but who you are cannot be damaged. Who you are is not who you think you are. And would you relax and let who you are sh show you, teach you, right? Teach us, be led. Like Kenneth says, you're going to know when that, that those drugs are just going to fall away. Anything that is not serving you is going to fall away. And it may not be according to what you want. Uh, let me just get that. This is, where this journey does not mean that my caterpillar life is perfect according to caterpillar people. Caterpillar people look at me and say, oh my God, how does she, oh, blah, 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 blah. It don't matter. I'm a happy person. I'm a happy person. So you cannot judge me on caterpillar standards here. Then that's what happened. We found out what we valued before. We no longer value, but that leaves a big hole and it's terrifying until you find what it is we're here to do. And Kenneth said it's for each other. We are here for the one mind. We are here to heal as a whole. I can't heal by myself. Kenneth can't heal by himself. He got to bounce off us. We all got to heal. We, it's, a, it's a group soup. So are we <laughs> peace? Are we putting peace in the soup? Or are we putting poison? I, you know, when I'm feeling bad, I'm like, oh, man, I'm poisoning our pot of soup. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a remember that. I'm not, no, I want to give peace to the soup we're making here. We are all here to make soup of peace. Piece of soup. I don't know. You, you're, talk, you're talking service. And the Course in Miracles calls it extension. 12-step calls it service. You know, we talked about sponsorship before. I can't keep it unless I share it. That's beautiful. 
I was under the belief, you know, that that I had to pay people to 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 to, to fix me. I had to pay people if they were gonna if, if they were gonna love me. What was the what was the angle? What was the transaction? Truly, that was a belief system that I I came in here with. I don't think it had so much to do with my parents. I think you know my whole family lineage got got into a trap, a capitalism trap. And and I get I was talking with. Let me share something. I was talking with a, another. I'm, I'm doing another group, a, a gay men's group. And this man is, is probably 70 or plus. And he was just smiling and he's, we're, we're coordinating all these guest speakers for our gay men's group. And he said, we, we started laughing about some of our antics in the past and some of our, our sex clubs and the baths, you know, the things that young <laughs> gay men do when they're younger. And, and I, I, said, I said, do you realize, uh, David, you're still here? And I said, oh my God, I'm still here. And I, I realized, you know, and he said, yeah, I had a guardian angel through through all of my my escapades. And I said, I had a guardian angel, too. What a gift to still be here in the same body. I mean, it doesn't matter if the body, you know, dissolved, you know, but what a what a privilege to still have this body and be able to deliver these these messages, become messengers. That's what I was telling the woman. I said, when butterflies are messengers. I don't know what the message is to deliver, but I'm damn curious what the, what that day's assignment's going to be. Who do I get to meet? Who am I supposed to meet? Someone is supposed a man at the paint counter or a woman at the checkout because that woman's eyes lit up and she looked straight into my eyes. I fell in love with her just out there at the self checkout. And after I showed her the hairband, told her the story, let her get on to the next customer, exit stage right. It was like a hit and run, a love and run. And you I said felt. You didn't and how it made me feel it's all i walked into the home depot you know dragon 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 i left feeling uh so I, i've got to focus butterflies no how does it make you feel they always ask me that question in spiritual communities i'm sorry marcy oh no i actually retained my thought it's a miracle um so you said you didn't know what your message was to the lady at the counter and i think your message was you're not who you think you are she wanted to hear. She wanted to hear about the hairband story. Most people kind of. Most people are not interested. They think it's it's gross and disgusting. And I'll agree. You know, they're they're. Oh, I got a bag of them, and it's a gross bag. But well, it's called <laughs> pearls to swine, and those. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. So you don't want to waste your story. I mean, it's going to bounce off of. Not that we know. Not that we know. We're not in charge of anything. So I will say that. But you just never know. I think your your story gives other people permission to look for spirit in their life. To I was having a conversation with a friend this week and she goes, you know, I know this is going to sound weird, but I find feathers. And I'm like, me too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have kind of a tradition. I, I adopt um, senior dogs. Um, I like the frost, you know, frosty face ones. And, and um, I, walk them every day and I collect feathers. Like I find beautiful, you know, a hawk feather, a blue jay, a, you know, and, you know, I kind of pick the ones that look nice and I keep them. And then when it's the sad day where it's time to, you know, let them go, I usually take their body to a cremation uh, service and I lay them in their bed and I put all my beautiful feathers around them. And it's like, I'm celebrating spirit and I'm celebrating the gift that their life was to my life. And the interesting thing is I had a lot of comments at the place where I would take my dogs. They'd be like, you know, it's just so incredibly, this job is so depressing and so sad. And, you know, just, it takes a lot out of you. And they're like, we've never seen anyone kind of prepare. I don't know kind of do that and it, it's kind of like I was giving them permission also to kind of look in this really sad depressing circumstance why don't we look for the joy and the magic and the spark and the spark is still there it's just moved on to a different form I mean you know so that's think, beautiful that you can demonstrate that yeah, yeah and you're I just really saying death is not real no oh god no no, they just I mean, you're on. you're witnessing that. That's what I'm saying, because you're not broken hearted. You're not a whole big mess. And I'm sure they witness that a lot. And and I, I think that is so important that you're gifting the soup of us this pot. Really. Right. 
Because imagine if you were in a different mindset and you just poured salty tears and grief and Mm -hmm. abandonment or whatever into our pot. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking it's some kind of demonstration of how much you love somebody. I mean, it's really, that's the ego's twisted thinking. That's why the Course in Miracles is just such a a revolution in thinking. It's a total revolution. So you have to be ready for it because it's going to say all this stuff we, this actor stuff we were trained to perform isn't who we really are. And it's making us witness to something that we don't really, we know we're not. You know, we, we know we're not this insignificant body that was born to live and get a few trinkets and then die you know we're here for love like extension connection community uh, spreading we don't know ripples of peace and love to others in the home depot who knows we cannot we're not steering this car and, and in fact it's already happened and if we're aware enough that keith just beats this into us you know, notice, you know, you're not the person that you're looking at. You're not who you can see. You're not who you, uh, I'm sure I'm not putting it as clearly as he does, but be the, you're the awareness. You're the sky behind the clouds. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're here emphasizing that beyond this character that has a stories upon stories about how he suffered and this happened and that happened. And beyond all that, there's this always who we were, this peace, this love, this son of God, this purity, this innocence. And that's what we're here connecting to. That's what we're here bearing witness. And, and I, I think, Marcy, your story bears witness that that's how you implement the course instead of just read it. That's what we're called to do. You know, this morning I was all depressed and I was like praying to God, Holy Spirit, please, God, you know, somebody hear me. And I realized later on, maybe an hour later, I was feeling so much better. But my faithlessness while praying was almost going to let me not be open to relax and have faith enough to see that I have been heard. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you're praying, please, God, please, God, then believe and at least give God 5, 10, 20 minutes and Mm -hmm. check in to see if indeed you Mm -hmm. can witness that you are feeling better. Mm -hmm. Instead of if I stayed in my thought, please, God, help, please, God, please, God, at all. And I all the whole, please, God, help, please, God, where am I giving my faith and pause and opportunity to see God's gifts. That's what I'm saying. They're there. I just wasn't available to them because I'm pleading. You see Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's, I just learned that today. And I, I just, when I checked in, I was like, wow, I'm feeling so much better. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I will give you more faith next. I will give you time. I will give you my awareness to feel that you have answered everything and that I have everything and that I'm fine. And I can just proceed with my life. And I, I think how that ties into what Marcy, when it all ties in, of course, what I what, what I noticed is Marcy, when when we're on our knees, it goes back to the 12 steps. It's just willingness. Mm-hmm. And and you know, when, when someone is when when their caterpillars are doing well, it's, it's not supposed they're not supposed to be willing. People, you know, they're not supposed to be willing yet. Every caterpillar will fail. And I, I just want to, you know, and I, I don't want to judge somebody who's not ready for the hairband story, but I, I, I've got to keep, I think Jesus kept moving. I kept moving from, from birth. I don't think he spent, uh, you know, spent a whole long time making the long-term, you know, re- maybe some of them were long-term, but I think he, he had a message delivered and he kept going and, and you know, he'd call it his father kept steering him in the direction where the message was supposed to go. Target here, target there. Someone who has ears to hear. I wasn't raised this way. I was raised, we had to, this is, this is exactly what my mental, and I've said it before, I was raised, you got to get a job and then you've got to make money and you got to put the money in the bank. You know, and it never made sense. What was the end game of this? Security. Mm-hmm. 
But if you follow down that rabbit hole, it was it was based on an unfriendly universe where we were all out for our own and that no one was going to take care of us. We had to take it. I, I go all the way down and it's it's basically a satanic because, you know, there's someone out there going to get you, get you, gobble, gobble, run, 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 run. And I, I don't want to live in a universe like that. You know what a ref, what a refreshing surprise it was to real real in the, the course of miracles that you, you can't just unbelieve that. You have to be unwound from that. But the more I got unwound from that, the more these these little seeds that have been there the whole time started going. Boop, 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 boop. And I'm, oh, my God, I see the pattern here as I as I dissolve all of this nonsense kindly and, 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 and slowly and patiently. I realized the seeds were here all along and that I, I didn't even need to fertilize them. All I needed to do was to 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 take to take this, you know, and slowly, you know, slowly reduce it, and and they're going to pop up by themselves. Like Byron Katie calls it popcorn. I like that analogy. It works. It's, it's, I love it's Byron not, Katie. Yeah. I love I I learned something from her. Um, I heard once she was talking about how every night, okay, so she gives her mind to Holy Spirit. She says, Hey, no, I'm, I'm tuning out and you're, you know, I'd like you to tune in. And, um, so I started doing that and I started, um, my prayer every night is, um, to help me remove the blocks to love, you know, cause I don't know what to ask for because I don't know what anything is for. So I just ask for the blocks to love to be removed because, you know, love is where I'm headed and love is where I am. Love is what I am. Love is me. So I'm asking for the blocks to myself to be removed. And that's what led me to this group. I really do feel that I um, was going, you know, surfing on my YouTube and I, I saw Kenneth and he pops up and he's like, you cannot ignore Kenneth. I'm sorry, but you just cannot. It's like a really good thing. And I was like, who is this guy? And what, you know, what's this about? And I really feel that um, it took probably a year and a half every night of praying for the blocks to love to be removed for me to be kind of led to this group. And it's just so incredible to me how, like Kenna said, these little plants pop up that were maybe already there. The seeds were there, right? I don't know. I mean. Mine were. Yeah. I, I, yeah. If it's true for me, if a, hope, if a hopeless person like me has seeds, you know, those seeds don't actually the truth is those seeds needed to be buried deep for a very long, dark winter, kind of like a, a one of those bulbs, they're um, tulip bulbs. The only the only way to germinate a tulip bulb is to freeze it frozen, you know, all winter long. That <laughs> That's not a popular message for somebody who, you know, thinks they can go to Home Depot and buy some pre-frozen tulip bulbs. We have to plant them ourselves. <laughs> I want to plan. I want, I want, I want, you know, and you know, you know, great spirit is sending me people who are frozen, frozen in fear. I love that. And they know it's not like I have any great spiritual teachings. I just love being around them. That's, that's simply, it's, it's simply love. And that's, that's where, you know, they, they think they have to go pay somebody because they think they're so shameful and so dirty and so, you know, so, so vacuous. I don't see any of that. I, I, I get excited. I say, oh boy, springtime's on its way. What kind of, what color bulb are you going to be? They're like, what? What are you talking about springtime? I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. I'm, I'm ADHD. And I said, no. New narrative, cocoon, bulb, buried, planted. Springtime's on its way. Are you excited yet? You see someone's face light up. You say, that's, that's the why. Mm -hmm. and, and someone just, came to me well someone came to me you know recently and was, was kind of pissed off said I, I paid a lot for spiritual credentials and here you're doing it you know you're calling yourself a healer i'm not a healer i'm a lover i just love i, I love seeing people if, you know if, if if you're if you're in that place i want to love you i get to love you <laughs> so maybe I should stop calling myself a healer because he was right. I don't know why I'm a healer or not. You know, maybe that's the wrong term, but I, maybe I can't use the word lover. I'm sorry, beloved. I cut you off. Love heals. Yeah, yeah love, love heals. Love heals. I mean, to me, they're <laughs> interchangeable, right? 
I mean, I we're not talking about, pills. we're not that talking about. That is what about... heals us, right? I mean, Thank it's, you. it's not our pills and it's not our, you know, it's, it's love. That's what it is. The yeah. metaphysical again, again, we mm -hmm. can't say it in caterpillar terms because we're talking about uh, what cannot be seen. You can't, uh, you know, and I, I'm not going to say you can't get paid for your services or whatever, but I just wanted to read this part of uh, a quote from a course, and it's uh, chapter 19, The Attraction of Guilt. And be, mm -hmm. you mentioned fear, and I, I have a healthy respect because fear is what I was feeling this morning. You know, this, this, this letdown when, when the caterpillar world has disappointed me once again because I done leaned on it and then it said, ha ha, and stepped away and let me fall. You see what I'm saying? You'd be leaning on that. You don't, <laughs> I don't know I am. I'm thinking, oh, but I'm leaning on something that I should, that is not for my best interest. That is, is feeding the ego crazy mind. So I just want to say, um, read this from chapter 19, I, the attraction of guilt, 12th paragraph and I'm in the blue book relationships in this world are the result of how the world is seen and this depends on which emotion was called on to send its messengers to look upon it and return with word of what they saw fears messengers are trained through terror and they tremble when their master calls on them to serve him for fear is merciless even to its friends. Its messengers steal guiltily away in hungry search of guilt, for they are kept cold and starving and made very vicious by their master, who allows them to feast only upon what they return to him. No little shred of guilt escapes their hungry eyes, and in their savage search for sin, they pounce on any living thing they see and carry it screaming to their master to be devoured. So I'm going to say this little blue book is talking about fear. We ain't a, we done made a formidable opponent and we made, we created it, which is really messed up. It's tailored to our own particular personality that we have in this caterpillar world. We done invented the right monster for us. And the only way to escape is not fight. You know, you got to look at this thing and emerge. That's why we take courage here. Because we are the creators of what I just read. Doesn't that sound like um, the uh, the Thrones? What's, what was that HBO series? Thrones? Game, of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, right? I mean, the viciousness mm -hmm. in that series, I couldn't even, I couldn't get, pe I couldn't start the next one. It was so awful the, the 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 just the horribleness that they they perpetrate on each other it's really really depicts what we're we're not saying this is easy i just want to clarify that we talk about oh we love and yeah that stuff comes after all the shit has gone through we gotta we gotta see it we gotta see that there is that is part of us too everything we ain't liking about him or her or this situation or that that is in our soup that's in our soup. How are we gonna do it? We're gonna add more. We're gonna we gonna neutralize it. You know, love it disappears. That that is the metaphysics of love. Love is metaphysical. It's a science. Yeah. It's it's fear is an illusion, but you know, love shows you that fear is nothing. But yeah. you can't have love without faith. And faith is what we're talking about. We're talking about our experience gave us faith. My experience, I will say for me, my experience feeds my faith because I practice what this course is saying. And if you don't, you can't get it. You're just reading and being spiritual. But we here to practice and say, yeah, this is what it means. This is, this is where I go to, to be guided. This is where I sink into, not mm -hmm. look into the ego, this, that, the, uh, mm -hmm. go within. And it can be any core, any path. I mean, any, yes. you said that you were, in a religion where you got on your knees five times a day. I mean, and that was, you know, you sink yourself into that or you, you know, I, I think it's kind of cool that a lot of us are course students. And so, you know, it's very, uh, 
difficult thing to understand. So, you know, I, I hope that people listening aren't like, oh God, you know, I have to be a course student to come on here to participate. Oh, absolutely. Hell no. You know, I mean, I was raised Mormon. I've been evangelical Christian. I've been, I mean, you know, it's what feeds you, you know, I'm not here to judge somebody else's path. You know, I'm here to say, Hey, Oh, cool. That's your path. I want to hear about it. And I want to, you know, I, I, it's the stairs that you walk up. It doesn't matter if they're metal or wooden or cardboard, you know, it's like, we're, we're, we're moving in the same direction. It doesn't matter how we're getting there. We're all, you know what I mean? I, I spent so. uh, seven weeks with evangelical Lutherans and I, I couldn't have done that several years ago. And <laughs> Um, you know, after seven weeks, I, I said, you know, we agree on this and we disagree on this. I said, you know what? You, you have this teacher and you have faith and you call upon your faith. I said, if that's so big that I'm not interested in, in, in some of this doctrine, that's, that's, that's never going to, you know, jive in our stories. And we became very close friends and we grew to love one another and I got to erase all of my, I had a lot of stories about Christianity, you know, which, which turned out to be victim stories. And I'm sure they had a lot of stories, you know, about, about gay, they even had a pamphlet, how to minister to a gay person. Well, I'm glad you never got that pamphlet out because it was, it was, <laughs> it probably contained some good stuff, but when it, when makes it, when it comes down to it, we learn to love one another. And, and I left there after seven weeks, you know, clean slate. I don't get to carry any of my, my victims from the Christian stories anymore. Because actually, I, I'll tell you this on Zoom, they actually gave me a gift. I shared with them, I said, I'll tell you why I've been pissed off with the Christians most of my life. You know, I came out as a gay man in the late 80s, and this is what the environment looked like. And this is the treatment I received from the evangelicals. And, and he turned around and he looked at me and he said, I'm truly sorry that you were treated that way by people who were unloving. I'm like, well, I, I said, I, I've been waiting for that apology for 35 years. Now I definitely have no excuse to hold on to that grievance anymore. I said, thank you. <laughs> I love that. I love that when. Um, well, I hope I, they're watching it too. <laughs> uh, yeah, that uh, somebody just, you just want to be heard, understood, validated. I, I, and with love. And I think that is our message, you know. Um, this 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 love dissolves everything. It it's it's scientific. It because you can test it. You can test it. If if I had anything, I all during those years of trauma, during those years of addiction, during those years of confusion, angel after angel after they would not have appeared if my life had been going well. My life was not going well, but they kept showing up. And that, that finally, that's when I saw the pattern. This is a friendly universe, you know, just like Marcy said, I was on my knees the whole time and I couldn't help myself, but, but certainly were people who could love me until I could learn to love myself. I've, I've got, I could, I've, I've even started the book to, to try and document all these angels. And come here and we'll show you, we can love you. Yeah. If you can't love yourself, we'll, we'll love on you. But it's, it's, it's a pay it forward, you know, commodity. Now I get to love others. You see, once, once, once I emerged at my first gulp of air, you know, it came to the surface. Now I get to dive back, back down and, 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 you know, pick up, I don't, I don't, I can't pick up anyone. I've got to be careful with my language, but I get to dive back down and say, there's air up there. You want to swim with me? And, you know, so we get, I think that's what Jesus did. You want to take up your mat and walk? Because we can go to the surface together. Yes. Hold your head while Buddy breathe. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of synchronicity, so um, in 2002, um, I was in a really, sorry, I was in a really bad car accident. And um, I had a near-death experience. And the, mes the message that I got after that was pick up your mat and walk. And honestly, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just not intelligent enough or something, but I couldn't never understand what that meant. I was like, what is my mat? And what, what, what do you mean? Just pick it up. I don't, 
I've always just had that in my head going, what is that message? And the first Zoom call that I came on here with you guys, at the end of it, Kenneth was like, you know what? Just pick up your mat and walk. I'm like, oh my God, I've been waiting <laughs> since 2002 to get it, to, to you know what oh. I mean? Oh, so I love it. it's like, and then the next meeting, he said it again. So it's like, I, I listen for stuff like that. And it's like, I, those are synchronicities that happen. You know what I mean? And why did it take me 20 something years to get it? I don't know. But I'm here now. I'm here now. <laughs> I got my mat. I picked it up. I really did. <laughs> I mean, truly, I the, there's a there's a an article on my website. It's called "The Script Is Written," and 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 truly, where those seeds are not supposed to jump, they they have to be buried for decades and decades before they'll germinate. I mean, one of my one of the angels, his name was Juan. He was the one who used to climb through my window at 6 a.m. to get me out of bed. Literally climb through my window. And he all he would say is keep going. Keep going. Very simple message. Mm -hmm. And as far as spending seven, you know, seven weeks with, with Pentecostal Lutherans, they knew the Bible. They knew the Bible backwards and forwards. And that's good because I've never read the Bible. So I got I got firsthand someone to read it to me and explain to me all the different stories. So I could, you know, get get exposure to that. Because because that came from the Bible. Take up your mountain walk. That didn't come from the course of miracles. <laughs> okay, but it did come from Jesus. <laughs> I think it's I cool know. how the messages that he gives us is like they're multi-layered. So Thank it's you. like can literally mean completely different things at different times in your life and it'll completely apply to whatever situation you're going through i mean the mm -hmm. pick up your mat and walk could mean so many different things to so many different people i know what it means to me when kenneth when you said it i it it like it was like i got sucker punched by it i i got it i was like oh my god i'm doing it i'm i'm doing it so Basically, what it says is, is, is you know, in, in 12 step language, just suit up and show up. Just show up. It's all that's being asked of us. Just, you know, some days when I don't feel I can, just get in the car and go. You know, you don't need to be ready. You don't need to be prepared. Just go. Go to Home Depot. I'm surprised. Go feed the chipmunks. Go feed the chipmunks. <laughs> and the horses. <laughs> Just go out and take it for somebody walk. else. If you can't do it for yourself, yes. do it for somebody yes. else. Somebody um, might need to see uh -huh. you. Somebody might need to hear. Some dog might need to have a walk. No. Yeah. You know, um, I was, I was, uh, watching this little video clip of the guy that was talking about Soma breath and something he said that was really profound was that, you know, we see people in their lives and we view them as having peace, inner peace and stillness and having this life that we're attracted to. And maybe we want to emulate for ourselves and we're looking at them and maybe, I don't know, being jealous of them or just, you know, feeling like we're not there yet. But at the same time, we need to ask ourselves, Am I willing to get still? Am I willing to, like, you know, Beloved was saying, am I willing to take the moment after my prayer to wait, to give God a chance to, you know, respond? So what I do is, you know, if I send up a, a prayer or whatever I do, um, I'll kind of visualize, like, after I'm done, I, I, I'm very ADHD kind of, so it's like, I, I need to have something going on in my head. So what I do is I visualize like white noise, like a fan and I just go, okay, you know, it's quiet now. And I'm just gonna, and you know, do I get an answer every time? No, but you just, you know what I mean? That pause. So I guess kind of what he's saying is when we're looking at the life that we want, we need to look at the steps we need to take to get there, you know? And I think being quiet and still is maybe one of those steps. It's the power of the mind. 
That's what David finally explained to me. You know, he David does not have you know an agenda. He you know people who come into the new age, you know, well that's not course in miracles. Well, bullshit, it's not. You know, he said he said if if you're if you're going actually for goal setting, he said that's training ground because you need to see how powerful your mind is. Now, now goal setting is, he, he would he would put it into the categories of stepping stone because ultimately, you know, we, we got to take it back and, and realize our goal is peace of mind. But if the backdrop is something in form of goal setting, he's, he said, he said, you know, he, he's not one to say, no, that's not, that's not course in miracles. He's one, he's one to, to fertilize that seed. That's... Well, it's, 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 it's not, it's not what you do. It's why you're doing what you do. What you're doing, right? It's the it's mm-hmm. it's it's goal setting with whose thought system. Mm-hmm. And and what's so cool about this is the Holy Spirit will take whatever you're doing and use it for its purposes. Whatever it is you're doing, so you don't you know you don't even have to be all that specific you can be doing whatever job you have whatever situation you you don't have to change it it's it's like you know but you can put it in good hands you could put it in sane hands you could put it in a sane thought system you can and I do want to say this Marcy you said something about being still and that is important I also want to add that when you can raise your frequency, which means you can feel better, you know, when you're feeling like shit, you're not going to access all this stuff there. You're going to access more shitty thoughts. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. So make sure you can get, get enough energy going to propel you out of that to a better feeling space. And then all this stuff really, you it, the the grace and manifestation everything is so amazing right because now you can receive it so it's it's like now you finally experience this situation at this frequency mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. instead of this frequency where you might have experienced it before so it's going to give you a whole different answer so it's not necessarily the situations are going to keep occurring until you get into the right frequency to see what the cause of it is, mm-hmm. right? Because we're here for the cause. We're here to go to the source, and the source is mind, mind training, and the truth. Let's say that the truth is 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 our whole goal, our whole integrity here. What is true is true, and there's no opposite to truth. As of course, love, there's no duality true. here. Pardon? Yeah. Le- oh, love is true, and yes you know, you're talking about your frequency that you don't have access to the, to me personally, for, for me, that's part of what this group's about is coming here so that we can help each other raise our frequencies so that we can leave this call. And then we can access these, you know, I don't want to call them higher levels. Cause I don't like higher, lower, whatever. I mean, we can access love more readily. I mean, that's, Uh, to me, that's what I see. That's how I'm experiencing this group is, is like, we watch each other kind of, you know, one person's up, one person's down. And we come on here and go, Hey, you know, I know that feeling. And, you know, like, we each, it's, it's really beautiful. It's, it's just when two or more are gathered. I'm humbled because somebody 2,000 years ago already said it. Um, I'm going to wrap up the recording, both of you. Any, any, any closing statements for the YouTube archive you're feeling? I have two smiles there. Um, what was our topic again, Marcy, when you're on your knees? On your knees. Oh. <laughs> I can't. I love it. I, I, I love after these Zoom calls, I get to make my, my little you know graphical gif. Hey, thing. for your picture on the YouTube. You yeah. know how you are in construction? Do those little knee pads or something, right? Because you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> I got to go down and stay in a deck right those now little... after the call, so I got to put my knee pads on, you know, this morning. All right, Kenneth Price, Sunday, August 20th, and um, this is our uh, Sunday morning Zoom call. We just we, we just had a great time. It's, 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 it's not real complicated. Beloved Marcy and Kenneth have just been loving uh, ourselves into, into our emergence, into our truth. 
And so if you're watching this on YouTube, leave your comments below. And even more important, visit the website that I've got down there in the description line. Come on board, 9 a.m. Pacific time on a Sunday. We'd love to have you so we can just keep the momentum of the, keep the momentum of this going. So God bless. Have a great week.